The Book of Proverbs, Chapter 22 Proverbs 22 verses 1 to 29 A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and poor meet together, the Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself, but the simple pass on, and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, and honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward, he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out, yea, strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. The slothful man saith, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. The mouth of strange women is a deep pit, he that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich, shall surely come to want. Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord, I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Rob not the poor, because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause, and spoil the soul of those that spoiled them. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways, and get a snare to thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are sureties for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. Sayest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. Opening Sentence Proverbs 22 verse 1 A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Finding the theme, true riches and right choices. Proverbs chapter 22 begins with instructions to choose a good name above great wealth. In scriptures, the Lord God is the only person who is spoken of as having a good name. Psalm 52 verse 9, I will praise thee forever, because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. Psalm 54 verse 6, I will freely sacrifice unto thee, I will praise thy name, O Lord for it is good. A man chooses a good name when he willingly receives the word of God and seeks to obtain his favor by believing it. Proverbs 8 verse 35, For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. True Riches A sub-theme of physical wealth is also highlighted in this chapter, as indicated by such words as riches, silver, gold, borrower, lender, bountiful, giveth, rob, spoil, debts, pay and business. Verses 17 to 21 speak of spiritual riches as indicated by such words as counsel, knowledge, words of the wise, excellent things, and words of truth. The king of Israel, and every person on earth, must choose which type of riches to pursue. The rich and poor are equal. Proverbs 22 verse 2, the rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. To meet together implies judgment. At God's judgment seat, physical wealth holds no influence. In other words, no one can bribe God. Psalms 49 verses 6 to 9, They that trust in their wealth, and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him, for the redemption of their soul is precious, and it saith Seth forever, that he should still live forever, and not see corruption. Romans 2 verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with God, the way of God and the reward of riches. Proverbs 22 verses 3 to 5, A prudent man foreseeth the evil, and hideth himself, but the simple pass on, and are punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, and honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward, he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. The word of God warns wise men against evil. Prudent men, out of an attitude of respect for the Lord, will put their trust in the word of God and act accordingly, they will be rewarded with true riches and eternal life. On the contrary, the forward man who refuses to yield to the word of God will walk in the evil way and be punished. The right way. Proverbs 22 verse 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, 
and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Verse 6 is addressed to the king with the implied subject of you. You train up a child. God is commanding the king to instruct a child, a simple, often foolish, immature person, in the way of God. When a child becomes mature, then he will have the knowledge to choose the right way for himself. No need to borrow. Proverbs 22 verse 7, The rich rolleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. The cold, hard fact is that a person, or nation, who borrows money to buy what he cannot afford, will be in servitude to his lender. This is a warning to the king against making contracts with the kings of other nations. God promised Israel that if they obeyed him, he would bless them. They would have no need to borrow from the surrounding nations. In fact, Israel was to be the lender, not the borrower. Deuteronomy 15 verse 6, For the Lord thy God blesseth thee, as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. Sow and reap. Proverbs 22 verses 8 to 9, He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. In order for a man to have enough bread to give to the poor, he must first plow the ground and sow the seeds. Some men would rather sow iniquity in an attempt to get rich quick instead of laboring in the field. The rod represents rule and authority. These angry men refuse to follow God's authority and instead walk contrary to God by making their own rules. Judgment. Proverbs 22 verses 10 to 11, Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out, yeah, strife and reproach shall cease. He that loveth pureness of heart, for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The implied subject of you is once again encountered as the king is instructed to cast out the scorner. The king was one of only a few leaders in the nation of Israel that had the authority to make this type of judgment. The scorner is one who despises the authority of God's word and refuses to receive correction. He is contrasted with one who loves pureness of heart. One despises the word of God, the other loves it. The wealth of words. Verses 12 through 21 begin focusing the reader's attention on contrasting words. Example, the lies of the transgressor versus the words of truth. Proverbs 22 verse 12, the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge, and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. 1 Peter 3 verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The lazy liar. Proverbs 22 verse 13, The slothful man saith, There is a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. The slothful man does not want to work, so he speaks lies, to excuse himself from what he knows God requires. Romans 2 verse 15, Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. The lies of strange women. Proverbs 22 verse 14, The mouth of strange women is a deep pit. He that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein. Strange women, plural, speak with one mouth, singular, which represents the doctrine of the false gods of the nations that surrounded Israel. God warned Israel against them repeatedly, but Israel refused to hear God's words. Some among Israel had worshipped these false gods since their deliverance from Egypt but it was King Solomon who led Israel to the heights of this adulterous sin. 1 Kings 11 verses 1 to 2 But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. Train up a child in wisdom. Proverbs 22 verse 15 Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. There is no implied subject of you, indicating that this wisdom should be applied to all who are in authority over children. The state of being a child is synonymous with being foolish. The desire of those in authority over children should be to instruct them in the word of truth. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Arrow be the poor and give to the rich. Proverbs 22 verse 16. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches and he that giveth to the rich, shall surely come to want. Job gives us a description of a wicked man who oppresses the poor to make himself rich. Job 20 verse 19, Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away an house which he builded not. This description of wicked men also describes Satan who has usurped God's authority in an attempt to take over his house. Satan will one day sit in God's seat in the temple. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4, proclaiming himself to be God. Those who follow his example are like him. John 8 verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil, 
and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The words of God spoken to his son. The remaining verses of this chapter are addressed to the king of Israel, as indicated by the implied subject of you found in verses 17, 22, 24, 26, and 28, and by the words thine, thy, thee, and thou which are found repeatedly. Proverbs 22 verses 17 to 21, Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For it is a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee, they shall withal be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things in counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Although these proverbs are called the Proverbs of Solomon, Proverbs 10 verse 1, Solomon wrote that he merely set in order many proverbs, Ecclesiastes 12 verse 9. Therefore, Solomon is not necessarily the writer of all of the Proverbs. It is more likely that David is writing this particular proverb to a very young King Solomon. Nevertheless, God is the author of the book of Proverbs. Do not rob nor oppress the poor. Proverbs 22 verses 22 to 23 Rob not the poor, because he is poor, neither oppress the afflicted in the gate, for the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoiled them. God warned the king a second time against oppressing the poor in judgment especially in an attempt to increase his own wealth. The words plead and spoil indicate a final judgment that will take place at God's judgment seat. Warning against friendship with the wicked. Proverbs 22 verses 24 to 27 Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands, or of them that are sureties for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? God warned against borrowing in verse 7, and against the angry man in verse 8. God now warns the king to make no friendship with him, I in context. This refers to the king of Israel making agreements with the surrounding nations to secure aid, instead of humbling himself and calling upon the Lord for help. Before northern Israel was carried away captive, Hoshi, king of Israel, paid tribute to King Salmanser of Assyria. Before southern Israel was destroyed and led, captive into Babylon, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, paid tribute to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Jehoiakim later rebelled against the king of Babylon and turned to Egypt for help. These kings should have humbled themselves before God and called upon him for help instead of calling upon the heathen nations. These choices led to their destruction. The book of Proverbs is more easily understood in light of Israel's history. 2 Kings 17 verse 3 Against him came up Shalmaneser king of Assyria, and Hosea became his servant and gave him presents. 2 Kings 23 verse 35 And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh, he exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of everyone according to his taxation, to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. 2 Kings 24 verse 1 In his days Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years, then he turned and rebelled against him. Remove not the landmarks. Proverbs 22 verse 28 Remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. Just as Job wrote about wicked men who violently took away houses and oppressed the poor, he also wrote about those who removed landmarks. Job 24 verse 2 Some remove the landmarks, they violently take away flocks, and feed thereof. The boundaries of the land of Israel were determined by God, no prophet, priest, or king had the authority to move the boundaries or sell the land, which they might have been tempted to do for financial gain or to make a covenant with other nations. Exodus 23 verse 31 And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines, and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. Ezekiel 48 verse 14 And they shall not sell of it, neither exchange, nor alienate the first fruits of the land, for it is holy unto the Lord. Conclusion Proverbs 22 verse 29 Sayest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men.
A man should choose to be diligent in God's business instead of making a name for himself. God will allow a diligent man to reign with him in his eternal kingdom. Summary God desired that the king of Israel and all who heard him would choose to receive his words, trust in him, and speak his words of truth to everyone. Instead, most men chose to pursue physical wealth by any means. Men's choices bring particular rewards. The man who would choose a good name over wealth would be given riches, honor, and eternal life. The man who chose to pursue wealth over the good name of God would be given snares, punishment, and eternal destruction. Dispensational Consideration Believers living in the dispensation of grace today possess the loving favor of God by placing their faith in the redeeming work of His Son on the cross. Ephesians 1 verse 6 Faith in God and in His word is what pleases Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6 Believers are not under the law. Romans 6 verse 14 Therefore, Borrowing money and making agreements between parties is not forbidden as it was for the nation of Israel. However, the Apostle Paul cautions his followers against owing a debt to any man, except the debt of loving one another. Romans 13 verse 8. The Apostle Paul also warns against the dangers of desiring riches. 1 Timothy 6 verses 9 to 10 But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Those that are rich are instructed by the Apostle Paul to put no trust in their riches and give generously to the ministry. 1 Timothy 6 verses 17 to 18 charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. The removing of ancient landmarks does not pertain to the body of Christ, because the church of this dispensation does not inherit land or an earthly kingdom with designated boundaries. Those who are saved by believing the gospel that Paul first preached, 1 Timothy 1 verse 16, will inherit heavenly places, Ephesians 1 verse 3, 2 verse 6, Colossians 3 verses 1 to 2. Under the dispensation of the gospel of the kingdom that was preached to Israel as recorded in the four gospels, those who believed false doctrine would be condemned for all eternity. However, in this present dispensation of grace, those who are saved by trusting in Christ, yet have been deceived into believing false doctrine, do not lose their salvation. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 15. They simply live an unfruitful life that is not pleasing to God. Romans 8 verse 8. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 1. These saved men will be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ, Romans 14 verse 10, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. This is why it is very important for a believer to know and apply correct doctrine. God gave the nation of Israel the law of Moses, Romans 3 verses 1 to 2, as the standard for judgment. God has preserved the whole counsel of his word in the Holy Bible for everyone to read and understand. God promised to preserve an accurate copy of his word by which all men will be judged. The failure of God to preserve his word would make him an unjust judge. God's accurate for English-speaking people is found in the King James Bible. Life Application Many things in this chapter may be applied to the life of a believer. Choosing to trust in God over the pursuit of physical riches still brings eternal rewards. This includes believing the words that God has written and understanding to whom he has written them. Believers should labor in God's business, which is to see souls saved and to see saved men established in sound doctrine. This business requires money from the generosity of believers. Proverbs 23 verse 6 Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye neither desire thou his dainty meats. In Proverbs chapter 23, the king needs to have a healthy appetite for God's nourishment. Proverbs chapter 22 homework. Read, Psalms 52 and 54 mention the good name of the Lord. In Psalms 52, King David writes about the wicked man who loves evil more than good, verse 3, and who trusts in riches rather than God, verse 7 cross reference 8. In Psalms 54, King David asks God to save him by his name from wicked men who have not chosen to follow God verses 1 and 4. Psalms 49 is about the futility of earthly riches. Reading these psalms will shed light on the theme of this chapter. Concordance Search Find the words angry and man as used together in a King James Bible. Notice how they are associated with transgression, sin, strife, and foolishness. Concordance Search By using Blue Letter Bible, 
you will find the eyes of the Lord used 22 times exactly. I suggest that you read through each of these verses to get an idea of what that phrase implies and how God preserves knowledge. Consider, who does the Lord abhor? Deuteronomy 32 verse 19, And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them, because of the provoking of his sons, and of his daughters. Psalm 5 verse 6, Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Psalm 106 verse 40, Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. There are more references to those whom the Lord abhors, and they all refer to unbelieving Israel in previous dispensations. Look up the words Lord and abhor as used together in Bible Gateway to find these references for yourself. It is important to note that in today's dispensation of grace, the Lord loves the ungodly sinner who is his enemy Romans 5 verses 5 to 8. Define, find the definition of the word mean by looking up the following references in a King James Bible, and then compare them to the definition given in a Webster's 1828 dictionary, Isaiah 2 verse 9, 5 verse 15, 31 verse 8, and Acts 21 verse 39.